Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit 2018. I'm delighted to be joined by one of the world's most famous and renowned physicists, uh, Mr. Roger Penrose, Sir Roger Penrose of the University of Oxford. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. So here at the AI for Good Global Summit, we're here to find ways to use AI to advance the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So what applications do you foresee or envisage for AI as a force for good? I certainly uh, appreciate the emphasis of for good because I think this is very important and th there are clearly things which artificial intelligence, as we understand that word, uh, can be used for. And we all hear about self-driving cars and things like that, so clearly that is one example. And I imagine in medical diagnosis, I've often heard about things that I would say in conjunction with a human being. I think it's very important not to remove the human element in these, but you can certainly call upon data, you can certainly assess things, do statistical analysis and things like this which are clearly objective qualities which can be advantageous, as let's say in medical diagnosis, but in other things also. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's very universal, <laughs> the fact that that AI can, can serve wonderful purposes. So I don't think, I, I tend to emphasize the dangers when people talk to me about AI, and uh, w the danger which often people refer to is they think that AI is going to take over, of course maybe it will take over some jobs, and we have to be careful about that, and so reorganize our society in ways that these jobs that they take over are, are fine and the jobs we don't want to do, so that's great. But they're not going to take over us because they don't have any conscious understanding of what the world is about and that's where we need to come in and it's clear that the AI is our servant and not something that we, we um, have to bow down to that, and it won't happen because it doesn't have the, the uh, abilities to understand things that we have. So uh, when AI for good, yes that's great and I think there are many areas um, I meant medical diagnosis, I'm sure it's true, architecture already true very much when, you know, what kind of structures can you have which will maintain uh, buildings and temperature control and all sorts of things, um, probably. I'm, I'm, I'm never quite clear where the boundary is between AI and, uh, you see, there's an awful lot of computation used in scientific work and in technology. So you say, well, we want to build an aeroplane, say, and so we want to construct it in such a way that uh, airflow behaves in this way and the materials have this kind of strength and so on. And so you do m many, many calculations which are very important in, in the construction of the aeroplane. But how much of this is what you would actually call AI? I think it's, it's the way we use computers in science and technology. Is this affected? I mean, when it's AI, really, I suppose, it's when you're saying you don't really understand exactly what's going on and use, using things like, I suppose, um, uh, what do they call bottom-up systems, where you, don't, you, ha you train the system and you don't quite know why it's behaving in a certain way, but y your ex it uses ex its experience to develop its skills. So you see this, for example, in, in these particularly the Go playing machine, which plays itself zillions of times, and, and it plays the game very well, uh, so it beats the, the, the grandmasters, the experts, but, but it, nobody really quite knows what it's doing. So you can see it can develop uh, skills without um, having the, the theoretical underpinnings of why it's got those skills. So I suppose that's what you might mean by AI, and if you want to design certain things in the aeroplane, which you don't really know enough about the dynamics or the 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 um, physics of the materials and so on, and you and you just try to use this device to to improve by its experience, and you, you can see when it breaks and when it doesn't break, and it theoretically does this and just works through different possibilities, without having the understanding of why it works. And I suspect. I'm thinking aloud when I say these things. I suspect that's probably what people mean when they say AI, AI in, in, in these systems. So 
you it, it's early days, isn't it? It's, it's, it's very days. early days. We're still exploring yes, the yes, different yes, applications sure, of, right. of AI, I guess. Um, yes. I guess I feel there are always dangers in these things, because when you don't understand, there comes up an unusual circumstance where it behaves strangely and badly because it doesn't have the understanding, but just has the experience. But if the experience is not, doesn't accommodate the situation which comes up, uh, then that's so something where I would think you would be a bit suspicious of AI systems. I'm, I'm talking aloud here, it's thinking aloud here because I haven't thought about these issues so much before. But uh, let's say that's what, what, what's meant by um, the use of AI in, in, in systems like this, where you, where you simply use, it uses its experience rather than its understanding. So are you uh, skeptical of AI or are you wary of it like Stephen Hawking that you shared the, uh, the Wolf Prize with? He launched yes. a very stark warning to mankind right. saying this could spell the end of, of the human race. Well, you see, my worries of the danger are almost the opposite of his, you see. See, he's worried that these machines will take over and uh, that will be the end of us and they will be better than us and then they will run the world instead of us. And we don't like that because we're us and not them. <laughs> now, see, I don't think he's right on this. I, this, my point of view, is that these devices don't have intelligence in the, in the sense of understanding what they're doing. We are the ones that have that. And as they exist, maybe someday we will know what's involved in, in these qualities of hum human understanding, but we, we're not there now. It's certainly not in AI as we understand it now. That's my view. So that's not the danger. The danger is almost the opposite. The danger is the belief that these machines are cleverer than us, and therefore we must bow down to them and do what they say. I think that's dangerous. It's dangerous because partly we may think they would take over jobs, and I think to some extent, they do take over jobs that they shouldn't. And you see this often in systems where you consult on the telephone and you, you, you press buttons and, and clearly what you're talking to doesn't have any understanding, you see. We just say, I wish I could talk to a human being, you see. Of course, sometimes you talk to a human being and the human doesn't understand either. But at least there's the potential to understand the problem in a serious way. So you want something which is more symbiotic, if you like, that the, that the AI systems can do, okay, they can call upon a huge body of knowledge and of experience, and they can run through examples of situations far more than we could. But you have to understand what it is that the limitations of this are, and how, what you can get out of this. And if it, is, if it works well, fine, and make use of it. And, and certainly the, the big store, we see this with the internet now, and the internet how much information there is out there is absolutely vast. And there's no way for a human being to run through all of the different things. And I feel there's a danger there because it means that fashionable things kind of take over and, and things which are not fashionable have a little chance, even if they may be more significant than the fashionable things. So there are dangers there. Now, could you have an AI system which tends to pick out on, on the things that should be looked at and which are not? It's an interesting question worth developing in a AI systems, I think. Again, I worry that if it actually involves an understanding quality, there is a danger that it doesn't have that quality. But you see, the advantage here is that the human being can say, well, look, this quality is something I understand, and I can now put that into the machine. And now that makes it a better machine, and I don't need to worry about this particular quality of understanding. There, there will be another one comes along, and then yes, we have to put that in. But the human element it still has to be there to have this overall understanding of what's going on, what the systems can do and what they can't do, and they shouldn't take over because they don't have this quality of understanding. But the social issues are important here. To what extent does it influence you know, maybe we don't need taxi drivers, you see, and you worry about what happens there, or is that the case? Uh, and a, so lot, on. a lot of the guests here uh, at the AI for Good Summit, um, and it's a paradox, yes. uh, believe that uh, humanoid, humanoid robots in particular um, could add the missing human touch in some areas, like uh, elderly yeah. care, for instance, or looking well, after yeah. children. It's a little worrying, though, you see, because where it's, I mean, with old, old, you might think elderly people where they really don't know the difference between the device, but it's worrying because do they really not know? You see, 
I think I worry about these things. Um, and with children, I, I think I worry even more, because children are very perceptive of, of uh, you know, the they know when these things are, are actual humans, whether it's the mother who has a real understanding and link between the child, or whether it's some device. Okay, you have animals which uh, uh, maybe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the spe species is almost distinct, and so there is no mother, so you give us a piece of cloth instead. Okay, maybe that's better than nothing. But for human babies, gosh, I worry about that. I think the human element is so important here. And to try and put an imitation of a human being and pretend that this is going to supplant the human. Also, there's the danger that later on the child realizes it's been fooled. And I think that's, that's worse, because it may have even th thought for a while that this was its mother or something, and then later on finds out that this is, this is it's, it's been fooled into thinking this. I think that can be, can be awfully bad. So these so are all the things we have to take into consideration. I think we need to take them into consideration, AI absolutely. System. Okay, in a, in a last resort, if there's nothing else you can do, sure. And yes, if somebody is very ill, and, and better than nothing, sure. But it's not a, it's not a substitute for the human under, human understanding. The understanding can take very subtle forms. Even you know, a face a child can see something in a, in, a, in a mother's face. Usually, I hate to say it, it's the mother and not the father um, that 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 can relate in this kind of way to a child. Okay, later on, and I'm sure the father brings important qualities. But at at very early stage, I, I feel that it's, it's really very important. There is something there which, which I'm afraid we can't do. <laughs> okay, so AI for good, yes. Yes, but we oh have to be careful. Yes, I think it's to be careful. Yeah. It's 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 good. Yes, there's a lot of places where it can be extremely valuable, but always be careful and s stand back. and And the word understanding I regard as the key. That that it it's not going to have the actual understanding. It may it may have some qualities of it that you put in. It may have some experiences which you can't have because it requires too many instances of this. But understand what this is and what this isn't is very important. Okay. So Roger Penrose, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.